Greetings everyone, hey how you doing? It's Matt Sella, and today I am doing a non-spoiler review for Toy Story 4, the latest entry in the Toy Story franchise. To reassure, this is a non-spoiler review, so don't you worry, I'm not gonna give away anything about the ending or what happens in the second or third act really much of the movie. It's just your run of mill review, giving my thoughts on the latest animation, gonna give you some of my pros, couple cons. Now before we begin, a quick update, I know I've been kinda MIA a little bit on my channel. I've been working on some personal stuff trying to get more stable. Some things didn't really turn out too well, but hey, that's okay. It's a learning experience. And I got a couple goodies for the channel. For some of those who are patrons of mine, kind of saw a sneak peek of what I'm working on. Trying to polish this podcast channel a little bit, especially for the visual audience. You're going to see some cute little things coming your way. But enough of that, let's get straight into the review. Toy Story 4. So let's get the pros out of the way. First things first, the visuals, especially the lighting and the atmospheric rendering, are beyond amazing. It really appears to be like the best looking Pixar film in my opinion. Whereas like, thinking back in terms of environments of like realism and all that stuff, I always felt the good dinosaur probably had like the best looking environmental art. The character designs and the actual story left to be desired. But I think this one has to be their best looking film, in my opinion. The water, the textures, weather effects, all of it beyond amazing. If you're a 3D visual artist or a visual effects artist, go see this movie. I think you're going to get quite a treat for your eyes. The story was well paced. The film went by a lot quicker than I expected. I suppose I was really engaged. Part of the story really tries to cut to the chase for some parts of it, and Woody's character I thought was beyond well written. You saw his internal struggle, but came across perhaps that he kind of knew what he was doing was right, and reaching that conclusion at his own pace whether if he knew it or not. Some conflicts felt a little manufactured, no pun intended, (laughs) but everyone felt natural on what their goals were and how they reacted to other people's resolve and ambition. Some went about achieving them peacefully, some not so much. But you knew where they were coming from, and I think that was very important in how these characters were written. Sweet, tender moments that had me on the edge of tears. There were plenty of those, but only just on the edge. Eyes watered, not quite in the crying state as I was in Toy Story 3. There were quite a few older folks in the crowd that actually did cry a lot, and you could hear them sniffing in the theater. I heard that. So yeah, there are tender moments and I think it really will resonate with parents, anyone with kids or young ones that have like the whole like making sure things go good for them kind of thing. Again, parents in general. That's all I'll say about that. There were a lot of moments where you could really reflect and say, I know how important this is because I was there. It was very sweet moments. And thinking hard on it, there was really only one thing that just didn't work for me, and that was Buzz Lightyear. I loved him so much in the previous films, but this one, I felt like they took away something. Like they inserted a new character trope or arc into him that made me think over nine years, how has this never come up before? It felt really strange. I'm not going to go too much into what that is per se. Maybe it was just me, but it it just felt jarring. Just a little bit. Oh, and one other thing, which is not really a con, maybe more of a nitpick in terms of filmography or the storytelling angle that they could have gone. I kind of wish we didn't see much of the human faces. Like, in the very first film, we didn't see it, any of the people or whatnot. Kept it mostly in the perspective of the toys. And yes, I know it was the early mid-90s when the film was made, the first Toy Story, CG animation was relatively new, especially with feature-length films. Modeling and animating human faces were not quite at the level it is now, like almost at all. So I suppose they tried to hide it in favor of the story because it worked both ways. Something like that. But for me personally, I kind of wish Toy Story 4 did a callback to that style from the first one. Not to hide faces because technology is not being there. That would make no sense. They are there but to kind of help the world of the toys perspective come across more. Again, not a con, just a nitpick, but very minor. I don't mind either way. I just think it probably could have added just a couple like decimals in the overall score. 
Overall, if you're a parent, Pixar fan, or an animation fan, I think you're gonna have a delightful time with this one. I really did. I enjoyed almost every Pixar film since the beginning, even before they did films, when they had shorts on TV or video cassette. And there was a little cameo, I won't say exactly what it is, but it harkens to something that they did in the past that left me smiling. I thought it was really delightful. So yeah, I think it was a really good movie, and I think most people are gonna enjoy this. It's another A plus for the Pixar filmography. And that'll do it for this little review. Hey, let me know if you saw Toy Story 4, what did you think of the movie? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Share your thoughts, join the conversation. Hey, if you enjoy content just like this, please consider going to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Matt Sella. Consider supporting me by donating as little as a dollar a month. It'll help go towards my podcast, animation, art, and all kinds of content made just for you. This is Matt Sella signing off and thanking you all for tuning in.